M20 on all metals. Here we're going to take about 4 ounces of M20 and add 20 ounces of distilled water to end up with 24 ounces of mixture. So that's a 1 to 5 ratio and here I've already mixed it up. So this is now ready for an immersion process. And we're going to just pour that into our Tupperware container. And what's nice is you can put this in PVC, you can do the stainless, but this is just a regular old sandwich Tupperware container. And we're going to take our piece of copper here, which we've already cleaned, and we're going to put it in. Now with a ratio that's this light, you're going to notice change very slowly. And we're going to leave a little bit of that in here so you can see how slow it changes. And remember that the color you see right now is not the actual color that will be on the metal. So you actually want it to go darker if you wanted this kind of color that's coming out right now of just a very light oxidation you need to still let it go further because when we kind of wipe at it and get the film that builds off that will kind of go away it's going to be lighter underneath so just something to kind of think of as you're doing this process it's a little different than spraying it on and so here's a about a minute or two later it's much darker you can see the the reaction is really kicked off so what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out and we're going to submerge it into a water container and we're going to kind of wipe at it. So you can see we're just going to go straight in and it's not quite big enough but it gets the point across and we're just going to take this sponge and kind of wipe at it and you can see that film kind of coming off and adjust the camera here so you can see a little bit better but you can see it's more of a gray rather than kind of that brownish black that was there before and we just need to try and make sure we get all that film off because that's not the patina the patina is what's left on the metal not what's left sitting on the surface in the kind of solution so you know, a little bit harder with these more textured pieces that's why we're using a sponge microfibers work pretty well I've seen people use brushes but overall we gotta make sure we get that film off or the patina will want to continue to oxidize so here we're gonna go on to the spray on method and this is a piece of steel and now I'm using a two to one so two parts patina one part distilled water and I'll use that for the rest of the film here just showing you on top of different metals just spraying it on instead of submerging it and so here you know we're just doing a piece of steel we rinsed and neutralized after a couple minutes and here we have and it's a nice kind of a light gray um, almost into a dark gray really kind of a nice finish though so from steel we're actually going to move on to aluminum and you know aluminum doesn't like to react with a lot of stuff so M20 is one of those that it'll kinda work but you know you gotta know what you're getting into definitely do a test sample because as you can see it's really not wanting to react around the edges so we actually go in with a scotch bright pad and and kinda touch it up and do a little bit more patina and try and move it around to the corners so we had to work with it a little bit and it really kind of every time we do it it kinda does this where it kinda reacts better in some areas and where it doesn't react in others it's kinda like using black magic on the aluminum where yeah it kinda works but you know definitely know what you're getting into and do a few test samples to know what you really are getting first so here's our finished m20 on aluminum and kind of cool kind of kind of a weathered brown uh, mixed with a little bit of gray in there but now we're gonna go on to zinc and zinc galvanized it's gonna do about the same thing and you can see it comes out very brown from the get-go and that's pretty much what you can expect remember zinc and galvanized the general rule of thumb and it doesn't apply to everything but the general rule is if it goes black on steel or bronze then it will go brown on zinc and galvanized and you can see this is true here with our finished here we've already rinsed neutralized and dried and you can kind of a, a nice warm brown almost like a Japanese brown on steel so that's kind of a cool one and from here we're actually gonna go and show you the bronze brass and copper what it was actually designed for now so we've got bronze and again M20 is really designed for these three metals not the three we just showed you and you can see I've got a little surface tension with a little bit of bubbles and everything again the scotch bright pad can help you break all that up and really get more of an even finish I'm trying to put a little bit more on but overall the scotch bright pad is probably your best technique to take care of that I'm also gonna kinda of try and flow it over to that one side that's not reacting with us very well and uh, it's just not playing very nice really 
Despite this piece kind of not playing very well uh, here in the beginning, after a couple minutes, remember two to three minutes is all M20 should need, uh, then rinse, dry, and neutralize, and remember to wipe at it and all that, and then we can go in, and, and this is what we got from the bronze, just a kind of a really nice brownish black. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. Now we're going to go into the brass and you can see the brass is going to react very similarly to the bronze. Again, it reacts more with the copper content that's in the metal. So brass is going to be a little bit lighter, sometimes a little bit more of a, a muter color than the bronze and copper will come into. But overall, we're all in the kind of the same family. You can see it gets very dark right here. And uh, again, let it react two or three minutes. We're going to rinse and dry it. And this is what we're going to end up with. Kind of a, a nice muty kind of again in that grayish brown family that we saw in the bronze. And finally, we've got the copper to show. And copper is going to react very similarly to bronze and brass. And it's good to note here that all of these pieces were just prepped with the Sculpt Nouveau Metal Cleaner and a Scotch Brite pad. There was no sanding on any of these. Just a good thorough cleaning. And all of these are the same concentration for the patina. So it kind of goes a, a nice show of what it, it can do on one coat at two to one. And a lot of times I'll do a three to one, but overall more coats, more concentration, the darker it is. So here we have our copper piece with the M20 on it. Came out a really nice, kind of a grayish brown, uh, blackish brown, just like the bronze and brass as we expected. Now, once we have all these patinaed, we've got to clear coat them, and I'm a big fan of the clear coats, so I usually go with Clear Guard or Everclear, but a lot of people end up liking to do the wax or the oil on these, and that works just fine. Here, we're just going to use the Clear Guard, and you can see it, it gives us a, a nice satin finish here, and overall, looks pretty good. Brings out that darkness, brings up a little bit more of that black in it. Birchwood M20 is available at www.sculptnouveau.com or by calling Sculpt Nouveau at 760-432-8242.